cracking reel, which is awesome. Video, we'll see how that goes in the morning. We've got some really... Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to Florida Keys Life. Out here early in the morning before the sun comes up. The kids just got off to school. Um, this nasty fog rolled in, but check out that wind forecast. I'll put it up there. Uh, it's the wind finder. Website that shows we got great wind. It's the advantage of living in the Florida Keys with your boat in the water at all times is that when you get these weather windows, you can take advantage of it. Otherwise, if you're down here on vacation or something, you gotta go out when you can, and sometimes you can get beat up by wind. So, anyways, uh, heading out this morning, great forecast, gonna do some Wahoo trolling, uh, some deep dropping and hit some patch reefs on the way back. So come along with us. I'll show you some of the stuff I'm navigating through here. A little sketch, no radar, but we'll take our time and figure it out. Okay, pause guys, before we get to the fishing, we're gonna unbox the brand new PC Fun Kraken electric reel we're gonna right, use guys, in this welcome episode. welcome to the Florida Keys life. I just wanna start off by saying I have one of the greatest wives of all time because I've been reluctant to spend a bunch of money on an electric deep drop reel and for Christmas this year she bought me one. So uh, being I still have kids at home, I'm not like some professional fisherman here. We are on the more price conscious side so my wife got me the PC Fun Kraken reel which is awesome. I did a whole unboxing by the way of this thing brand new but being a YouTube rookie, I screwed it up and lost the film somehow. Still figuring this out. But anyways, I just want to show you guys still. Super awesome box. Heavy duty. Uh, it comes well packaged with all the stuff that you'd need. I'll show you what's left in here if I can get this dumb thing open. Jeez. PC Fun has all kinds of cool stuff. So you, get, you get your manual, which surprisingly is in pretty doggone good English. Has all the parts breakdown, how to use it and whatnot. Battery user manual, extra screws, and well packaged. So I doubt that you would have a problem with it showing up broken. It came with this cool bag in here, and what I did with this bag, and, and what I'm doing to prepare for fishing it comes with this nice little tote here for the battery that straps to the rod um, this long lead if you wanted to clip it to batteries to run it um, which where I'm probably gonna fish on my boat I could clip it to the batteries uh, and then this lead here to go from the battery to the reel um, so I'm gonna keep that in my nice bag here ready to go near my reel as well as this little wrench to tighten up various little things on there uh, in that bag ready to go now the battery she also got me the battery 5,000 milliamp hour battery uh, that comes with a nice charger wall charger ready to go and the battery is surprisingly small I mean look at that thing puts in the palm of your hand um, and it can screw right onto, let me see, I've already got it mounted here onto my bent butt rod. And so here is the port. And you can see where it screws right into. So you can 
screw the battery right to the rod. I'm a little bit worried about that getting hit or pushed or something. And so I probably won't do that. But I might just strap it to the rod or I'll even put it in my pocket and uh, run the cord over to it. Uh, but anyways, here's the actual reel. Uh, super nice and smooth. I've got it spooled already with a 40 pound braid. Uh, and then I put a 50 pound mono top shot on it. Uh, probably about 50 to 100 feet of that. Uh, to my swivel. So I'll be trolling with this tomorrow for Wahoo. If I catch one, it'll make a good video. We'll see how that goes in the morning. We've got some really good weather tomorrow, so I'm going to get out there before daybreak. Uh, and then I'm also going to go deep dropping. There's a few, a few deep spots where I've always had luck, so we're going to use it for both. Uh, get plenty of action on that. So that'll be in tomorrow's video. I had some problems mounting it to the reel, which I did get that recorded. I'm not sure how that lasted and the other thing didn't, but um, I'll probably show you some of that footage uh, about that. Anyhow, that's the PC Fun Kraken deep front reel, probably the most cost effective way to get into deep dropping if you're not doing it professionally like I do or just doing charters or something like that. I'm just an occasional guy that goes out and does it, I don't know, once every couple of weeks or a month or so uh, for deep dropping. So anyhow, that's the PC Fun Reel. We'll get out and use it here in a little bit. Okay, our Wahoo trolling wasn't incredibly successful. So we come out here to this wreck and set up on it. Look at that beauty. The red part's actually the wreck, but look at all the life and fish off of it. So while I'm setting up, figuring out what the drift is, that's when I'll re-rig my rod. Okay, got a fish on. A deep drop and set up. Let's see what we got here. Sitting a second ago. Make sure he's on. Get him out. Oh yeah. Look at that rod. Yeah. Slow it down. Hopefully there's no sharks. Grab the gun out. Come up quick. Okay. Let's see. I don't think I have much left. Give me anything left? Anything? Anything? Nothing. Singles at a 
time. something off this wrap. Now, if our knot doesn't let go or I'm get sharp, I'm not sure which. Oops, there we go. I've got a loose thread. It's 90 feet. Whatever it is isn't huge. Probably not a big AJ. Oh, I got a nice yellow white snapper off here once. Yeah. Hold on. Ooh, the spot is setting up the drift and the wind swoops around. Okay, cool. Still fight. Nice. Take a drag. Come on. Yeah, I don't want to come up. Jays are out of season right now, but Let's see what we got here. Yeah, man, I just this spot a bunch today to get this one spot. Keeping you two land real, I got at least three hours into this spot of drifts. I got broke off once. Went out to 700 feet, got a fish. Let's see what we get off this wreck. 
something's fighting. 200 feet. Left to go. That's what this cracking almost makes it cheap. Probably gonna get a lot of hate for that, but it will. Wow, look at that pole. Yeah. He was still not liking it all the way up here. I kind of doubt it's a snapper because they would have given up by now. Hundred feet. Go. 80 feet. Guess I don't have any sharks. Yeah, I got some good fight. 40 feet. Left to go. Start to see color pretty soon. And crank it the last little bit. Okay, let's see what we got. If I get better at tying my knots, I can pull this in. Got some good color, whatever it is. And it's an AJ. Smaller AJ. Right in the lip. That's perfect. Perfect hook. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much like the bit. Another guy caught earlier. Get the weights in there. Hooks out. Put on there. Lesser amberjack. Now look at all the little sea lice on him. Those little guys crawling on there. There he goes.
go to fish deep drop it here. We're in just 660 feet, so you can see in the cap. And I don't know how many retrieves and drops I've done today, probably six or eight, and that battery's not showing any sign of reduction. Let me get my gloves in case I need a grab. Something must have got out of whack on our distance tracker. Yeah, because I'm not. Oh, there we go. I'm starting to see color. I don't know if that's my bait or if that's an actual fish. Hard to tell. Just, oh, yep. There we go. A friggin'. That's called. Okay, let's get the weight first. That thing was fighting. I knew it was Winchman Snapper. Well, he's dead anyway, so he's going in the box. All right, guys, just wanted to show you. The sound probably won't be good, but. Five to seven miles an hour all day with uh, 0.7 to 1 foot seed. It doesn't look like that. We got about four and a half miles to go to get into the pasture. Okay, here's our black belly rosed fish. It's been sitting for a couple of days. Just scales. I'm just gonna scale him, we're gonna cook him whole. Well, we're not gonna cook him whole, we're gonna leave the skin on because I've read that the skin has some great flavor to it. And in fact, it's supposed to taste like bacon. 
So we're gonna descale it and cook them as fish bites. So let's come out here. I think it's easier to scale them whole. Water. Let's put them down here on the edge of the canal. Oh yeah. We should probably cut these fins off. Yeah, he's got some barbs on there. I don't think you want to be poked by. So, the scales actually came off pretty easy. Flip them over, do the same thing. Okay, there we go. Descaled. Let's rinse him off a little bit. Yeah. All right. Okay, normally I wouldn't clean a uh, fish in the kitchen, but. Uh, this guy's such a small guy and we're just using him for fish bites. So we're going to clean him in here. The idea is I'm going to fillet him. I'm going to fillet him on here like a normal fish. And then take the fillets and cut them into squares. And uh, with the skin on it. Uh, to make fish bites. That's the, the idea here. But since there's not much meat on this little guy, we got to to get it all. Okay, come around over here, all right along the backbone, like you would anything else. Just above the rib rib cage or the spine, but you don't want to leave any fish, any, any meat behind on these little guys. Boy, that is some white, white meat. Boy, that's a good looking, good looking piece of meat right there. Ooh. Skin's on. Supposed to have a little bacon flavor to it. I'll trim that up here in a second when we get the other fillet. Yeah, it didn't leave a lot of meat there. Okay, so let's come in over here. Right up to the head. Trace right along the spine. of a stomach so that makes it easy. Okay, well, that's a pretty good fillet there too. So 
And just so you know, it's best to let the fish rest on ice for, for two days on ice. Hey, can you get me a bag, honey? Put this in, should get rid of that. Boy, look at that. There ain't much meat left on that. That's pretty good. Oh, no. fish rub. I've tried it on other stuff before and like it really good. I, I don't know who makes it. But anyway, try to put it skin down to get the meat seasoned here. product. Alright Haley, let's see. It was delicious. Try it out. Nice and flaky. Mm, you can tell how moist that is. <laughs> that way. Right, that's good looking stuff. So of all the fish, hogfish, grouper, tilefish, everything else, what do you think? I can... I still think I like hogfish better. I can see why somebody said that it had a lobster-esque feel to it, or oh, taste mm -hmm. to it a little bit. Yeah. That's good. Oh, that's a really good flavor to it. Yeah. That's like, uh, yeah, I can see definitely the lobster texture. Hmm. Figure out how to catch more of those guys. Yeah, yummy. All right, let's take them to the kids, see what they say. Good. Try a bite. What do you say, Peyton? <laughs> oh, Peyton's out. Um, Peyton's right, out. It's, not that it's bad. good, huh? Regs. Where's it come? I don't eat fish. It's kind of good. It's just, good. Just try a bite, buddy. Let's see what Liv has to say. It's, it's good. It's buttery. Taste. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like almost like mine. Almost, but. Mahi? You feel like lobsterish? No, it's way more moist than mahi. Mmm. Mmm. I'm finding it. <laughs> Lives out. It's really good. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> yummy. There's bones. Yeah. Oh, you got you a bone? I just threw it on the boat. Mm. What? <laughs> You're throwing my stuff on the boat? Down. Give it two up and one down. All right. Haley's up. I'm up. 